Hey everybody, welcome back to Mission Cognition Social Learning Channel. If you are just joining us for the first time, my name is Ashley Rose. I am the owner and clinical director of Mission Cognition Social Skills Development Centers. We teach play and social skills use, utilizing the science of applied behavior analysis, and I utilize this channel to disseminate information to all of you about various topics related to that. So today, I wasn't quite sure specifically what I wanted to talk about, but we've been doing an alphabet theme, if you're catching on by now, and we are up to letter G. So we posted a poll on our Facebook page. Should we talk about goals or should we talk about generalization? It was almost a 50-50 split. So I thought, hmm, why don't I combine the two? how do we write our goals and plan for generalization from the start and the way that we decided to do that is through the development of what I call a generalization grid and I've learned so much from precision teaching and I really have to thank the concept or the framework of learning channels for giving us this idea so if you're interested hope you'll stick with us and let's hop to it When deciding to focus on a skill acquisition program or a behavior reduction uh, program, generalization is our ultimate goal. So it's so nice to see a reduction of that challenging behavior or the display of a new skill in our classrooms or in our centers or in our in homes, if that's where you're providing the service. But if that individual is not utilizing that skill when it matters most, so in the natural environment without your level of support or without your prompts with a variety of people in a variety of situations, with a variety of stimuli, that skill is not generalized. So it's going to be of limited utility for that learner. So we need to continue to work on that. Fortunately, there's things that we can do from the start to program for generalization from day one before we even begin our teaching. If you're going to put prompts in place, for example, before you put those prompts in place, you better have a plan for, fate, for fading them. If you're going to teach a new skill, you need to have a plan for how you're going to teach that to generalize to other people, places, and things. Again, utilizing that skill when, where, and with whom, it really matters. So what I was finding in our sentence is, hey, I know that there are scientific ways to program for generalization, but are we missing the mark in some way when we're writing our goals? And for today's episode, because I'm merging the two topics, generalization and goals, I want to really make this very specific so that it doesn't make our video on and on and on and on, you know, lasting an hour longer, which I can certainly talk about the topic that long. But to keep it brief, I want to make it specifically about uh, role playing. So in our centers for a certain population of, of participants, we utilize BST, behavioral skills training. And if you're interested to learn more about BST, just drop me a comment below and we can plan a whole episode on it. Within BST, you have the following components, instruction, modeling, rehearsal, feedback, and then your in-situ assessment. So your, your role playing is where your participants are actually practicing the skills. They're practicing in a fairly structured way. But you, as the instructor in our center, we call staff facilitators. You, as the facilitator, need to plan those role plays. How are they going to practice the skill in your center or in your clinic? The way that they're going to practice is what's going to support you in making sure that that skill is generalizing to other places. So what I was finding is I knew that I was doing it, but I didn't have a formal way to train staff on it. And I felt that it was a, really a, a, a barrier to to helping our staff to be more autonomous in their goal writing. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking, how can I write a, a TA for this? How do I get this out of my brain and onto paper? So I started to do um, a little bit more reading up on precision teaching. And I went to a couple of workshops and a couple of conferences and I gotta give a shout out to Amy Evans who really stayed on top of me and was sending me a ton of great resources. I, I'm so appreciative of that. So. Within um, precision teaching, they have something called learning channels. So I'm not confident enough in my skill set to skill set to explain that to you in great detail, but I'll tell you the gist of it um, and how that served as a springboard or framework for the development of something that we call a generalization grid. So with learning channels, we talk about input and output. So an example would be see, say. So I could see the word cat and I could say the word cat. I could hear a sound that a cat makes and I could say the word cat. So hear, say, see, say. 
I thought, oh, wow, that's extremely helpful for planning our role plays. I'll give you a concrete example. One of the skills that we were looking to teach our teens was offering help. So we need to sit and brainstorm all the different scenarios in which you would offer help. Look at those inputs and outputs. So see somebody who needs help. Okay, great. How do we operationally identify or define needing help? So see somebody carrying something heavy. See somebody with a mess, a spill, or broken things on the floor. See somebody with sort of a grimaced face. See somebody with a sad, pouting face. Say, are you okay? Do you need help? Can I help you? Okay, so see, say. Let's think about an input of sound, hearing. I hear an unexpected loud crash, bang, or boom in another room. I hear something breaking or I hear something on the floor. Hear, say, do you need help? Are you okay? What about a do? Approach, see a mess on the floor, say. So we're basically utilizing the senses in that specific example. So that informed our role play. So we practice all of those scenarios in our center. We would have staff walking down the hallway, falling and, and ah, ah, holding onto their ankles, smashing into walls, dropping, dropping things. So we, we really get into these role plays because the more realistic you make it, the better you're doing that programming for generalization to the real world. So that's, that's multiple exemplar training all of those inputs and and outputs we're also teaching loosely because we're not so focused on just responding to one specific scenario or one specific example so those are scientific ways or if you're sticking with the science of applied behavior analysis for how you can be programming for generalization from the start so i would encourage you to think about that grid in your mind if you're working with a population of learners who are doing um role plays and you're working through utilizing BST or maybe you're utilizing teaching interaction um, procedure, which is the same sort of teaching package with very similar steps, and you need to plan for those role plays, I really encourage you to visualize that grid. Okay, what might they hear that will um, trigger this response? What might somebody say where our participants would need to do this or say this? Could there be a smell? You could smell something burning, right? You could smell smoke. Is everything okay? Are you all right? So if you're practicing all of those things, you are in a much, much better position to be planning and programming for generalization from the start. So generalization grid. Hopefully this was really exciting for somebody because I know that I was so thrilled um, to be able to see all of this come, come together. So the idea itself was exciting, but more exciting was to be able to give something more formal to our team members so that if our facilitators could be much more autonomous and confident in their goal writing and in the way they set up those, those role plays. So absolutely look forward to your feedback, look forward to your, to your comments. If you're able to try it out or if you have anything to add or ways to expand, drop us a note. I, I definitely read them and we'll certainly respond. If you have not subscribed already, please do so. We very much appreciate that and just encourage us to make us to make more videos and continue to disseminate this information to you. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next episode.